So story time. It's late Wednesday evening. Uh, well, it's probably Thursday now. It's like almost three in the morning. And I basically spent the whole day binge watching in bed. I binge watched three shows from beginning to end. And then it was time to get some sleep. So the usual routine, brushed my teeth, washed my face, hopped into bed. And I was just playfully mimicking an accent as I was falling asleep, you know, as us weird actors do. And I was just saying a whole bunch of random words until as soon as I was like really close to like falling asleep, I said the word adventure in this accent. And all of a sudden I'm wide awake. So here's the story. Rewind the clock 11 years. I'm still in college. I still have a 32 inch waist and I do what anybody does in small town, small college town, America. I go to the mall. Every month or so there's like something happening. There's like a fair, then there's like acrobats or something. Well, what woke me up tonight was um, this one incident where there was an exhibit. You had to pay like tickets to get in, but I didn't have any money. It was, this was like right after the holidays or something like in the middle of January. But like always, whoever came into our tiny little town and neighboring town always brought like a few semi trucks with them. And me being the wandering little adventurer that I am, curious about people who are outside of our tiny little cooped up town. A boy raised in the country, but longing for more adventure. And I remember there was like four girls and a guy that were all helpers and handling stuff. And I just struck up a conversation with them. And I asked, you know, like, how did you get into this? How do you think about this whenever you're searching for a job? And almost every one of them said the same thing. Oh, well, this, this job found me. And after a while they were saying, well, you've got quite an adventurous soul too. Maybe you ought to come with us. And I thought they were just kidding, but they mentioned it again, like later in the conversation. And I'm just like, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know anything about all this stuff. And like, oh, well, neither did we. And I was like, really? They're like, yeah, we all just like live together as one big happy family and you just learn on the job. I needed a job and this popped up and it's it's been a wild ride. Now, I will admit I was in a very angsty, depressive state. It took me a long time to finish school and I had been aching to get out of small town central Texas for the better part of a decade. So the more they kept talking about this, the more enticing it began to sound. And I kept trying to talk myself out of it because you know, everybody there was like pretty like rugged and whatnot. And here I am little soft old me. And I told them like, would I even, would I even fit in here? And I remember this one girl who was in the back and she just sort of yelled out. I never got to see her face actually. She said, oh, you'll fit in here. <laughs> and they all just sort of like chuckled. In any case, time went on and it was nighttime. We were all in the big empty parking lot with the two semis and there was like all these parts of the show that they were putting away. And even though I didn't get to go see the show because I couldn't afford the tickets, uh, the ringleader came out, started telling everybody like, oh, put this away, put this away. And that's when I took the cue, like maybe it was probably time for me to like not bother them and let them do their job. So as I was walking away, I heard a voice say, I hear you're an adventurous kind of guy. And I sort of awkwardly stopped, didn't know if that was meant for me or whatever. And he's like, yeah, you. I'm like, oh, sorry, I didn't know you were talking to me. And he told me, yeah, that some of the workers were thinking that maybe I might be a good fit for their team. And I was a little taken aback because I'm like, did was he overhearing us or did he hear from other people who were sort of being exchanged between the semis and the whatever? And at this point, I'm kind of torn like, okay, this is either like a cult or maybe this is my ticket out of here. And I swear we only exchanged like maybe one or two sentences, but then it all came to me because I remember him putting his arm around my shoulder and then asking me, you think you'd be ready for this kind of adventure? Adventure. Adventure. Adventure was the word that woke me up and I, I, I chickened out. I mean, I'll be honest, I just flat out chickened out and I'm just like, what am I talking about? I can't leave like my family. I, I mean, I mean, wh and what's the point? You know, I go from Texas to Oklahoma. So I politely said, well, I'll be honest, I have one more semester of college left and it's been taking me a long time. And I, I kind of just want to finish it. And he's like, oh, that's all right. Well, we come to town every once in a while. And I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, little did I know that one semester would turn into two. And if it wasn't for my best friend, Emily, who brought this up to me, I would have completely watched that docuseries and not even realized it. But it is true. I turned down a job from the Tiger King. Weird. So I'm gonna chew on that for a while. Story time over, the end, and good night. <laughs>